Okay, Ken. Um, I hope you're ready. It was hard hard to understand what you're saying there. You were cutting in and out, but um, we can get. My name is Heather, and I'm a trader, and I frequent Ken's chat room, and I got some requests to go over the ATR statistics spreadsheet that I use, and so we're having this webinar, and I just want to make a note that. Just because these things work for me doesn't mean they'll work for you because we all have a different psychology. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and share, and hopefully, you'll find something useful to use in it. So, the spreadsheet that I made, I'll just give you a brief rundown on it. It's made with XLQ. The first half has about 25 tickers, they're the ones I'm most interested in. The second half I use for researching my weekly stock universe and I try to limit it to 500 tickers. Any more than that it's uh, it's too hard to keep up. The uh, price in the first grouping that I'm going to cover is also repeated again in the second group I'm going to cover and that's a redundancy to make sure the spreadsheet is working properly. If you want to see what the formulas are, you can just click into the cells because the spreadsheet isn't locked. I leave it unlocked so you can um, experiment with it. And I have a lot of hidden formulas. So if you want to see those formulas, the instructions are here on the page. Also, it's amazing how many errors you can get just from making a few simple changes or moving things around, so be careful. Before I forget, I'm going to post all these slides in the chat room, so if you miss anything, uh, you'll be able to go back later and download it and use it. So we'll move right onto the spreadsheet. I uploaded a copy onto the website in the chat room, so you should already have it, and if you have it open, you can follow, and if not, I've broken it down into some simple slides to make it easier to um, go through. So group one is just basic information, ticker, name, current price, nothing special. The second group, which is green, has the intraday price. That's the redundancy I mentioned earlier. Then I monitor the simple moving average for uh, 20 days, um, 20 period. Many professionals, institutional traders use this. So I try to factor it into my trading. Then there's the spread, which can be helpful when you're trying to determine a risk reward. Then your bid and your ask. Group three, it's the ATR basics. It's a 30-day ATR in the first column. The second column, you have an ATR ratio, um, what percent the ATR is compared to the current price. If the ATR were like $10 and the price of the stock were was 100 then the ratio would be 10%. The next column is the relative rank. It's ideal for sorting the research section when I'm trying to go through a lot of stocks to see which are strong. And I prefer large movers relative to the price. I feel like they have a greater potential return on my capital when I trade. And the final column is the five-day uh, EMA plus two times the five-day ATR. It's a way I uh, determine if the stock is extended, and it prevents me from chasing it up, especially on swing and position trades. Another example of extended is I won't enter a stock that is 100% or more above its 200-day moving average. Group four, it's just the prior day, uh, prior day's close and today's open. The first column is the previous close, then you have today's open, then you have the amount off the close, which is just the difference between the current price at the open um, and the previous close. Then off the open, how far the current price is off the open, and a percentage move from the open to the present. 
it's just some good reference material that I like to have handy. Group 5, we have Ken's Frogs. It's a mechanical entry, and I'm going to have to draw all kinds of stuff all over my chart to figure out if the, the frog was happening. So I am incorporated it into my spreadsheet. The first one, uh, section, is a half frog. It's a plus or minus half, um, half a standard deviation, and then the full frog plus or minus one standard deviation. If the uh, I have it set up so that if you look in the candidate column, it'll just tell me right off the bat if it's a long or a short candidate. So it's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. If it doesn't meet either criteria, it'll just say no. Now we're going to move into the 30-day gain, fail, and range statistics. This is not a mechanical system. It must be used in context with other information, like what's, what the indices are doing, what your regression lines are doing, price reaction to the Bollinger Band mean, things like that. And I really can't stress enough how important it is to look at SPY, QQQ, and TNA for directional guidance. It's absolutely uncanny how often they move in tandem. And then nothing I use is a standalone system, not even RLCO, because there are many false RLCOs during any given day, especially when it's really choppy. And so a lot of the things that I work on are just a means to verify or confirm that I have a high probability with any particular RLCO. I talk a lot about in context make. And so here's some examples of context. So what does price do? Maybe it moves down and goes to the average range stat low uh, low of the day. How long did it take to get there? Did it take 10 minutes or 2 hours? Uh, what's it doing now? Is it still going great guns or has the price slowed down? The tempo slowed down and the price level out. You want to know what are the regression lines? Um, Bollinger Band Mean and MACD slopes doing? Um, maybe they were going down and now they're flattening out and the negative space is closing. And then what is what are the indices doing? Are, are they moving up? Are they moving down? That's very important. And then what will you do in context of all this information? Each bit of information is a stroke on the canvas that paints a picture that um, gives you an idea as to what the probability what the probabilities are. Now we're going to get into the fail statistics. It's basically, as far as formulas go, just the, the open to the low of the day. It's 30, 30 days, and I've calculated the standard deviation, the minimum move, average move, average plus one standard deviation, and the maximum move. Now on the spreadsheet, the first half to the left is uh, just raw range statistics. Then the second half is that information translated into price form. The thing I like about having it in price form is you don't have to make calculations intraday. You don't have to juggle numbers in your head or whip out a calculator. It's there. It's handy. You can use it. You can hide columns that you don't need if it's a distraction. It's very helpful. And then also, you can use this information for a risk reward. So, for example, if you look at the first row, if there's a stock that is currently ABC, it's currently at 136, and the tempo is slowing down, and it took two hours to get to where it got, you look at the spreadsheet, and you can see that the fail stat is 135. So I'm probably not going to get into that stock um, under normal conditions. I'm probably late to the party, 
and um, you know I, I don't want to go short when it's already already so close to the fail stat and this is normal conditions not an event driven move like horrible earnings or the factory caught on fire nothing like that you know the uh, CEO was indicted just just your normal everyday um, trading so to go in a little bit deeper you can use this in a lot of different ways so say the stock has made a move down from the open and maybe it's making new lows then you see that the price is approximately between any one of them we'll just say it's around the average for this example and you've noticed that it's taken a while to get there the price is now hesitating the tempo has slowed it was shooting up um, it could send a signal that there's a short-term intraday change or a potential reversal or a temporary bottom you definitely want to consider how long it's been moving down and the way I would interpret it is if it's already fallen almost to its fail stat then that cautions me that I'm late I don't want to short it right now or if I'm in the trade I can use it to anticipate an exit or um, stop and reverse or if I haven't been in it at all I might make this an opportunity to go long here's an example of a trade you can use it to anticipate exiting your short trades or like I said prepare to stop and reverse or go long if you haven't already jumped in if you look at the slide you see that the range stat was about 143 and if you look at the chart at the number one area it fell to about 142 that's pretty close and then the tempo started slowing down and it appeared to start to level out a little bit it seemed to have found a bottom and it signaled to me that it was a low risk entry so um, I entered it and it went up <laughs> I was a little late I had some problems getting in but that would be one example of how you could use this so just because you miss the move down doesn't mean you can't catch the move up here's another example the low was just stat the price tempo had started um, slowing down and the price leveled out and you, there's a couple of dojis thrown in there that signals a low risk entry and I may not be able to expect a big move but um, once it gets past that Bollinger Band mean it it starts to look more and more like a pretty good trade and then once it exceeds the VWAP that's another positive sign I would exit if it showed any weakness in the um, regression line 10 period especially on the three minute chart but um, this was a nice little run now we're going to do group 7 which is gain statistics it is pretty much identical to the fail stat it's just the reverse it's 30 days worth of statistical data um, you have raw range statistics on the left and price form on the right all the same benefits it can help you figure out if you're late to the party or uh, excuse me I missed a slide there or if it's getting near a top or if it's time to short so exact same setup maybe the stock made a move up the price is say it's nearing the uh, the average price is hesitating or the tempo has noticeably slowed down it's been going up for a while 
So might not be a good time to go long. Might be a good time to wait for pullback if you want to go long or just flat out short it. Here's an example. I, I uh, use the statistics to anticipate exiting this long trade. Um, I use the average to the gain stat um, and that's about the time that it started to fail. And when I combined it with my RLCO, which you see is starting to, uh, the 10 is starting to curl, curl down, and my MACD signals, it proved to be a pretty reliable exit. But I always want to look at the trade in context and in conjunction with other signals. And if I'm in doubt, often I'll check the SPY, QQQ, or I'll look at market internals. Now we're going on to range statistics. It's just the range of the high to low. Also set up like gain stat and fail stat. The reason I have this particular grouping on my spreadsheet is I use it as a redundancy in case the spreadsheet isn't updating. If you've ever worked with XLQ, sometimes it loads slowly or it might get a glitch. And then at least I have this raw um, statistical range in front of me that I can add up in my head quickly or use a calculator if I need to or if I, I'm having spreadsheet problems. This is my trade assessment sequence. It's how I determine uh, probability for each trade. And they're, they're really instrumental to any success that I have had. So number one, I look for changes in tempo. I want to know the duration of the move. I want to know what the fail, gain, and high-low range statistics are. That's why I have my spreadsheet. I check the indices for overall direction, and I also check it at the moment that I want to trade. And I, I uh, look at its slopes also. Bollinger Band mean slopes, regression line slopes, MACD slopes. I want to see what direction they're moving. I'll check my uh, observed schedule. Those are time tendencies, things I've found to um, just um, things that I've found tend to happen repeatedly day after day. I put them in schedule form so I can refer to them. I'm going to show you an example in a minute. I check all the slopes on all the charts that I'm working on and um, later in the webinar I'll show you my screens. I have a lot of charts from uh, the 10 second, 30 second, 1 minute, 3 minute, 10 minute, the daily and the weekly that I'm trading. And I also watch the price reaction. To me this is critical at the Bollinger Band mean and the VWAP. And then I have a, a couple of other little strategies I've been working on that will complement the RLCO. I'm going to working on a paper that I'm going to share with everybody when I'm done, but uh, it's not finished yet. And then I check market internals. I want to know who's in control and if anything has changed since I last looked. Is uh, Was declining volume low? Was it, you know, in relation to upward volume and has it increased? Those kind of things give me information that I can factor into my trading. Here's an example of a Pacific Time Observe Schedule. For me, the stock market opens at um, 6 30. I'm three hours behind the East Coast. I've noticed just from some of the stocks that I trade, this is what tends to happen. You get a pre open push, the market opens, you get a flurry of back orders, it's wild, it's crazy, it's erratic. Then um, at about 6.51, it's, it often reverses, goes up and down. It's just choppy and crazy until about the morning run, which is about 7.20-ish it starts. Then you've got coffee break shorts, second wind for pullbacks, lunchtime shorts, post-lunch pop, deadheads, <laughs> and lunge plunge or ping pong flatliners. I try to make things fun so I remember what what it is. Now 
do stocks follow this all the time? No, absolutely not. Um, but what I want to ask myself is, are things happening as they should? Are they following the schedule? Uh, or is the ticker late? Or is it? And if it isn't following the schedule, what could this mean? And how might it affect price movement later? So this is something everybody has to do on their own, because what you see might be different from what I see. But this helps me tremendously. It increases my probability of being successful. I'll give you an example. Say I'm using um, gain statistics, and it's up up high. It's beyond the average. It's the it's at the gain stat, and price is hesitating, and it's been going up since the open for an hour and a half, and now the price tempo is starting to slow. Price uh, it's starting to level out, and then it's time for coffee break shorts. I'm going to short that stock, and I think I have a pretty good chance of making it work, just from my experience um, observing this schedule and using all the other elements uh, in combination. Number nine uh, is the range statistics, but for long targets. Again, set up the same way as what we've already covered. The only difference is, is this one has an average plus two standard deviations thrown in the mix. I, I wanted um, something between the maximum and the range stat. Again, the format's the same. You can um, follow a stock that's made a move up. It can be off a low or just simply making new highs for the day. You want to see the price near um, the minimum, the average, the range stat, um, the maximum, or I, oftentimes it'll fall in between one of the two, I've noticed, and um, kind of like halfway between, and then it'll, um, then there'll be a change. And I want to look for um, the price tempo slowing or price hesitating or leveling out in some way. I want to consider how much time it's been running, because if it's been going up for, say, 20 minutes, I'm going to treat it a lot differently than I would if it's been up for two hours. Um, you just factor these little things in, and, and it, it helps paint that picture. Here's an example. I was trading Netflix. The um, stock eventually reached the range stat A ATR. So um, I got in a little early, I scaled in, I kind of jumped the gun, and then I got my second half of my position really at the top, right at that range stat um, ATR. And I consider that a low risk trade. It, was a, it happened at about 8.30, so it had been running for about two hours, and then it fell. I'm looking carefully to see if there's any support or hesitation at the Bollinger Band mean. Um, there wasn't. It fell right through, a great sign for a short. And then it kept going down. And eventually, um, I observed that on the three-minute chart, it was finding some support at the Bollinger Band mean. And on this one-minute chart that you're looking at, it started to level out and the tempo slowed. So I got out. Here's the range statistics for short targets. Or um, basically, you can fade these moves, or you can go with them. It's also set up the same as the long targets, but in reverse. So you have 30 days um, high to low long targets. Exact same setup. You know, you want to know if the stock's been moving up or down, where it's going to fall in these range statistics, how's the price behaving, how long has this been going on, were you late to the party, um, or did you get in and have a great run and now you want to maybe protect your profits, or maybe you're feeling really lucky and you want to stop and reverse and make a little more money. So here's an example. 
the price, um, we're, we're looking at it as a, a short. So the price went a bit past the minimum low statin. You can see it went down to uh, like 198 something. A lot of times they'll exceed one of the range ranges just a little bit, kind of like a rubber band and then it'll snap back. It's not an exact science. So price leveled out for four candles. The run had lasted about 45 minutes um, since the opening it had been falling. I checked out SPY and QQQ and I noticed that they were roughly moving in tandem and that SPY and QQQ were starting to decline. And another thing I observed is that often from my observed schedule around 720 is the time that stocks pick a definitive direction to start their morning run. So if you, uh, I'm going to fade this and, and play it on the long side. Here's another example. Uh, it's actually the same one, excuse me. I'm just showing you there's the low and then it runs up. So if you'd gotten in at, at uh, well, shortly or right about the RLCO to run it up, you had a nice run up and the exact same thing happened. Um, the price tempo slowed, it started to move sideways. You had about five candles kind of holding. Um, the run lasted about 40 minutes. I observed that SPY and QQQ, um, which had gone up, were now starting to go down. And I observed that around 8 o'clock, stocks tend to fall, make shorts. If you look at the time that it's starting to level out and getting ready to fall, it's just around 8 o'clock. So had I been in this trade long, that would have been a good time to get out. And uh, if I hadn't been in it, it might have been a great time to short. Group 11 is just intraday price information. It's just a quick reference for the high of the day, the low of the day, and how far off the high and the low each one is. I can use it to cross-reference range information. If you look at the first row, the uh, intraday range at the, at the far end, ID range, is $19. Well, if on a range statistic, uh, ATR information, the, um, the maximum move is, say, $20. Well, you know, it's already gone 1941, so I can factor that into my, my decision making. The um, at range percent column, that's price location relative to intraday, uh, the intraday range expressed as a percentile. I'd like to know um, where it is in the day's trading range. So if it was a $10 range and the stock was um, at uh, $8, then it would be at 80%. One thing I really like about that is it reveals institutional support. Even on a, on a down day, if you can have a close in the upper half of the range, the higher the better, that can be a sign of institutional support. Then there's volume. I use volume as verification for breakouts, breakdowns. I like to know if something's moving on below average volume or average volume. It helps me determine if it's a head fake. Um, an example would be reaching new highs on low volume. Um, that's kind of a red flag. So it can be a, a great way to confirm what you're seeing. Then there's the swing stat. I think Ken calls this uh, gap, gap stat. But uh, it's the same thing, same format, raw data on one side, price data on the other. Um, 
my thought process is if I'm going to hold a trade overnight, I'd like to know on average, at least for the last 30 days, um, what does it tend to do from the close to the open? If on average it drops a lot, then I probably won't hold it overnight unless I have a strong reason to do so or maybe I have a large profit uh, margin or cushion and I'm, I'm willing to handle that volatility. It also lets me know what kind of volatility I can expect. And once I know that, I could adjust my position size accordingly. Maybe uh, take some partial profits and just keep a small, small position on to swing that over. And it's also good to give me a rough idea of risk reward. Even though this is an ATR, I do use it in conjunction with ATR, and I have shared this spreadsheet in the chat room. It's just a recent high and low um, support and resistance. I'm actually going to expand it to include more months, um, but they're near critical points. So if a stock's making a big move up or down intraday, or maybe over an extended period of time, it's been grinding down slowly day after day. I'm going to look to see if it's approaching um, a significant longer term support and resistance, whether it's you know a five day higher low or a two month or three month. And if it is, I'm going to factor that in. Specifically, I'm going to try to determine um, if I can fade that move or if I should jump on board in the direction of the trend. And uh, one of the ways I can do that is, again, it's the same as everything. I want to look and see if price is hesitating as it nears this long, this, this critical long-term support and resistance. Uh, is it putting on the brakes or is it just slicing? I'm going to apply the same thought process I use with the ATR to this. A little sidebar about prices falling in between. So when the price has fallen between uh, a gain stat or a fail stat range, um, I will check the high and low range statistics because it might be leveling out at well, one of the higher low ranges. And then if the range stat is falling in between, I might go back and check the gain or the fail stat and see if price is consolidating near one of those um, one of those stats or I'll go look at the daily and monthly support and resistance ranges that I just showed you. Now really quick I'm going to try to put this all together for you at least I've got um, my charts for the ticker, I've got SPY, QQQ, TNA, monitoring those. I've got my range statistics up. Then I've got my trade assessment sequence. And I've got my mantras <laughs> to keep me on track. So I want to evaluate but not hesitate. I like to see confirmation on my entry and I like to use anticipation on my exits. I find if I wait for confirmation on my exits, I lose too much money. And when I'm evaluating things, I always try to consider these factors. Direction, degree, distance, duration, tempo, and place all of the action in some uh, context, some form of context. Here's a screenshot of my sc one of my screens. I run 10 screens, and so I have a lot of things up. But for each ticker that I'm trading actively at the moment, I'll have a weekly chart, a daily chart. That's part of context. I can see what the bigger trend is, um, and that helps me just to have it in the back of my mind as I'm making decisions through the day. Then I've got the 10 minute, 3 minute, 1 minute. And I'm sorry on this example, the 10 second and 30 second chart uh, didn't have any data on it. 
I forgot to get a screenshot of it Friday and this morning there wasn't any information but I trade all these and all my decisions are based on looking at every every one of these charts as I'm trading I'll look on the 10 second say I'm shorting something and I'll look on the 10 second chart to see is price falling through the 10 second Bollinger Band mean and when it does then I look to the 30 second is it, is it falling below the Bollinger Band mean on the 30 second and yeah if it does then I'll go to the one minute and it, maybe on the one minute it's hesitating so I might make ready to exit in case it starts to move against me and I just keep on going down the line and um, it works out pretty good. Then I also monitor the SPY, QQQ, XIV, and TNA. I monitor these on a 10-minute chart. They're up all the time and I'm constantly referring to them as I go back and forth between checking the ATR and um, my other entry signals and exit signals. Now here's Tesla and SPY and I was wondering if you noticed anything because I sure did and this is not unusual this happens a lot it's, it's really surprising how often a stock will move in tandem or mirror SPY or QQQ they both went up started going up at about 640 and then they both started to uh, shortly after 7 let's say 720 maybe the time that normally the market uh, picks a direction for the morning run they both started to go down they in fact they both went down four candles so that's why it's really important to look outside of your stock at other at other factors that's why you want to put things in context Then I've got my ATR spreadsheets, which we just went through. And then there's my uh, quick trade assessment sequence. And this is what I found is most effective for me. But everybody has to dev uh, develop their own sequence, something that fits your own psychology and your own strengths and weaknesses. So for me, number one is stock tempo. If I can't see it moving, I can't trade it. Then the duration of the move, indice direction, my schedule, the ATR statistic versus current price, then all the slopes on all the charts that I just showed you I'm looking at. That's Bollinger Band mean, slopes. Then I want to look at the behavior and price reaction at the Bollinger Band mean in the VWAP and then um, at other strategies I have and I also am constantly updating my market internal information so I can see what the direction of the overall market is and for some reason it's very helpful to know the volume and the number of new highs and new lows it's just more information more paint for the canvas now here's an example it's Tesla we're on the three minute chart it had a run up at, uh, before the market opened it started to run up then at uh, 630 the price got to around the Bollinger Band mean area and it went up a little bit more it kind of made a small pullback not much of one but it, it kind of pulled back for a minute, consolidated, went sideways, found support at the VWAP. Well, it just happened to do that around the um, gain stat average, which was 186. And it did this at around 185, 186. It caught its breath, I guess, and then continued on up to 194.90. Now this is the same chart. The low was 
177.53. And if you look at the range stat data, 177.53 falls between the low range stat maximum and then the average plus two standard deviations. And launched up. And it went all the way up to the uh, average plus two standard deviations um, of 194.95. That was the um, two standard deviations, and the price was 194.40, only off five cents. It's uh, amazing how accurate these range statistics are a lot of the time. So I threw in a little example of my trade assessment sequence for this particular chart in this time frame. So I would have I would have asked myself these questions and gotten these answers. The uh, the indices. Well, this stock was roughly in tandem. Where was I in my schedule? It was 7:20. It was the time the morning run was going to be determined, and that's about the time that the stock started to decline. The ATR was uh, near the high of the day and at the average plus two standard deviations. The slope on the indices um, and Tesla itself, they were starting to flatten out on the 10 minute and the one minute. They we're still up on the three minute, most of them. And uh, at the Bollinger Band mean, you know, it pulled back and found a little support early on. And then what you can't see on this chart is um, it fell through afterwards at about 8 o'clock. And it happened that the market internals were declining uh, in the declining volume was increasing um, while the advancing volume was not. And then the tempo had slowed after a 45 minute run. So that's kind of how I put everything together when I'm looking at a chart and I'm trying to use these statistics there's some advantages to uh, this is just going to wrap it up it's the spreadsheet you don't have to calculate a lot of numbers in your head and I like to be able to make decisions quickly and keep my focus on the charts and I don't have to mark up charts because it's time-consuming and it clutters charts for me it does anyway I can use the data to determine risk and reward I'm able to anticipate where the price might change direction. It also offers guidance on uh, where profits could or should be taken. I will say it does work best in when you have a pretty good intraday trending. If it's super choppy, it's it's very difficult. Um, but you know, you can always go to lower time frame charts. Those actually help me. It's kind of counterintuitive, I know, but and then last, the thing I love best about ATR statistics are uh, I'm working with probabilities instead of just guessing and hoping. And last but not least, I want to thank Ken because really all of my XLQ work that I've done and I'm doing has been inspired by him. And um, if you want to watch the other videos I've done, which are a little bit different than this on YouTube, there's the link. I'm going to post the slides in the chat room. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to email me at this address.